Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So perhaps the most important factor behind my journey so far as a musician is the fact that I did not major in music. In high school growing up, I was that typical violin student. I played in orchestras and I learned nothing but Mozart. But when I got to Stanford for college, I didn't know if music had a place in my life anymore. I didn't know if it was important enough. And so I quit and I stopped playing for months. I was one of those freshmen at the time who had no idea what they wanted to study. In fact, my roommate used to get so annoyed with me because each week I'd come up to him excited about this new major I decided to dedicate my life to. And fortunately, after exploring a few other options, I landed on the product design program in the engineering school at Stanford, which is represented this week by the folks at Epicenter. And the home base for this program was a space called the Product Realization Lab, a maker space where engineering students had access to machines to build with. And today, I want to spend a few minutes just telling you about my experience in this space and how it truly affected me for the future. And so in, in, the first, in one of the first classes I had in this space, we were urged by professors to think of a product that we commonly used. And given my background, I thought of a music stand. And we were then asked to think about what would we change about that product if we could create our own. And with a little bit of research and time, I realized that I actually hated most music stands. They were either flimsy, and I'm sure you've seen them, they were either flimsy or e and easy to store, or they were sturdy and beautiful, but they could barely fit inside of a minivan. And I was urged to question, you know, why couldn't I create one that could fulfill both of these needs, that could be sturdy and beautiful, but at least fit inside of a Prius? And so I began to prototype and design a model for a stand with a telescoping shaft and a foldable tray that it could extend and compact into a box. And for months, I spent about eight hours a day in the machine shop, learning how to use every tool that I could. And I was in this continuous process of, of questioning the way things were and then applying all of my energy towards finding a way to create my idea. And I remember sanding it and putting the final touches on the stand, and it felt so rewarding, so fulfilling, because I had brought my own idea to reality. But then I began to question, why did all of this creative energy have to be limited to this one engineering building on campus? And I was urged by my mentors and professors to look at other areas and aspects of my life that I could apply this newfound creative mindset towards. And fortunately, it brought me back to music. Just as I was in the habit of questioning things in this engineering shop, I felt inspired to question the traditional sounds of the violin. And I began to view the music of Mozart not as the end-all, be-all of music, but as one person's perspective, and that I, too, had the capacity to offer and build out my own. And so around this time, I began to compose my own music, including the piece that I just performed for you. And in my work, I aimed to connect the classical world with melodies and, ryth and rhythms and textures from popular genres. You see, the true product of that engineering class was not the music stand. In fact, I can't even tell you where it is right now. But the true product was an internal mindset, an attitude that I could write my own music in the world instead of just playing notes that other people had written. And I'm so honored to be here today because the idea I'd like to offer you is that there are students across this entire country who are simply just playing notes that other people have written in their lives. Whether they be in the engineering school, music school, in the basement of a biology lab, there's a large percentage of students today who are just following the standard path living within a syllabus that was handed to them. And I believe that if schools can somehow combine the diversity of knowledge that is present with a maker's, a builder's mindset, the possibilities are endless. The possibilities are truly endless. Now, 
As I approached my own graduation last year, I knew that I wanted to do something with music, but I felt inspired not to just go down the typical path waiting to get discovered in a cafe somewhere. Uh, I wanted to create my own entity. I wanted to apply this engineering mindset towards my career itself. And I began to wonder, what if I could combine my passion for music with my academic background in innovation and design? And with the help of professors at Stanford, I developed an idea for a venture where I could perform and speak for different companies, using music as this metaphor to inspire creativity in organizations. And it was a very rough idea. But on this exact date, June 15th of last year, was my graduation. And I remember it so vividly because I was consumed with fear. Fear mostly because all of my other friends were basking in their job security, and fear because I was leaping into the unknown with this idea. But I trusted the process of my education, and now leading companies from PricewaterhouseCoopers to Disney have hired me to perform and speak for the employees. I've been able to travel to places like Amsterdam and Berlin to do what I love, and in fact, tomorrow I'll, I'll be able to give a presentation for players and coaches of the Seattle Seahawks down the road from here. Uh, things I would have never imagined a year ago, and I share all of this with you because my career, my path, would literally not be possible if I had just stuck within the world of music. And it wouldn't be possible if I just stuck within the world of innovation and design. It was the conscious intersection of these two worlds and the support from professors, my mentors, that made this happen. I recently had the opportunity to present at a college outside of Los Angeles. And after I spoke, a student came up to me and said that he resonated with me because not only was he an engineering student, but he also loved poetry and had a passion for environmental advocacy. And so I asked him what he was doing after his own graduation, and this is when his energy kind of dropped. He told me that he had rushed to make a decision and had just accepted a job at, a, at an accounting firm near his hometown. And this saddened me, and not because there's anything wrong with accounting, but because he seemed completely unaware of the infinite ideas that could stem from his diverse passions. And it saddened me because the educational experience that he had invested in was somehow limiting his perception of what was possible instead of expanding it. And what saddened me the most about this is that there are thousands, maybe millions of students across this country who share his story. I envision an educational experience in which students are not just judged by their ability to take a test, but by their capacity to take a risk. An experience in which life and career aspirations are not just determined by who you happen to meet at a career fair, but what you want to build and change about the world. An experience in which a university, a school, is not just a set of rules to live within, but a place for people to prototype and build out their ideas, no matter how different they might sound. And as leaders in engineering education, you're the perfect people to help create this world. And as you move forward today, this week, and in the future back to your respective universities, I invite you to embrace that what you do is so important. It is so powerful because you're creating much more than just future engineers. You're creating leaders, problem solvers, creators, builders, whose mindset can propel them to change the world. Thank you so much.